What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode we're gonna start tearing into this 1JZ. We're gonna do a leak down test on all cylinders to make sure the engine's healthy. We're also gonna check the valve lash clearance to make sure everything's within specifications before we pull the cams and get them replaced. So whenever you're doing a leak down test on the cylinder, you gotta make sure that the piston's at top that center. Now, there's two ways for that piston to be at top that center. One at the compression and one on the exhaust cycle. What that means is uh, generally on the four stroke engine, the piston comes down, that's uh, when the intake valves are open and the air is getting sucked in. So there's nothing we can test when that's happening. Uh, then on compression, the piston goes up and all the valves are actually closed. Intake and exhaust are closed, that's why it's called compression. And that is why uh, we need the piston to be atop that center during that time so we can see the true value of the leakage and where the air might be going. Now, if you were to do it on the exhaust cycle, the piston can be on the, on the very top of the cylinder, but the exhaust valves are already open because the piston is actually pushing the uh, combusted air out through the exhaust side. Now, what I like to do is I like to pull the valve covers off for that test, makes it a little easier, and I am gonna get into it with the cams and the valve guide seals as well. So definitely, definitely a good idea for me to pull the, uh, pull the valve covers off. This way, I look at the cams themselves and once I bring cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six to top that center, I'm gonna look at the cams and I'm gonna make sure the lobes are not pushing down either on the intake or exhaust side. That way I know I'm at the top that center that I should be testing the cylinder at. All right, so I ran through all the cylinders. The leak down's great, Any, anywhere between 10% and 5% being the lowest, which means the engine's healthy. There's no issues with uh, compression leaking from the intake valves, exhaust valves, or the compression ring. So um, my assumption would be if I did a compression test on it right now, it would come out just as good as the leak down test. I also wanted to share with you guys what I was talking about, the cams. Um, I currently have it set up on cylinder six, and as you guys could see, intake cam's facing up and the exhaust cam is facing up. What that means, I am now on top dead center, true top dead center of the compression rotation. After that, the exhaust valve is gonna start rotating over and start opening up the valves and letting the air out through the exhaust. So I got the uh, leak down tester all set up here. We got top dead center, both, uh, both cams are facing upwards. And the way this works is you set up the air going into the cylinder to 100 PSI because that gives you a perfect division number between how much percent is leaking. So out of 100 PSI here going onto 100 right now, we got about 5% leak down, which you can probably translate it to five PSI since 100 PSI, 5% leak down. So this thing, as I'm pumping 100 PSI into that cylinder, it's retaining 95 PSI in it. And that is how you do a leak down test. While I have the valve covers off and since I'm doing cams, another test uh, that's pretty quick I like to do is do a valve lash clearance check. Uh, that What that means is we're checking the clearance between the cam and the bucket. The bucket uh, clearance will vary based on the wear of the valve. Since the valves go up and down, up and down, eventually the seat on the bottom of the valve wears in a little bit and the valves tend to go up on the clearance and what that creates is less clearance between the cam and the bucket that sits on top of the valve and that could potentially create a uh, abnormal wear to the cam lobe and eventually once the cam lobe starts wearing it no longer opens the valve as much as it should and then you can potentially lose horsepower on that specific cylinder so what i do is 
well, there's no other way to do it other than checking the clearance when the valve is up because then you know that the cam lobe is not pushing down on the valve at all. So on the exhaust side here, on the 1JZ, the specifications is uh, 0.008 to 0.012 inches and on the intake side, it's 0.006 to 0.010. Those are the specifications. So I got a 0.006 right here and it slides in just perfectly. I've already tested it with a 0.07 and it's kind of tough so we know that the intake valve is at the bare minimum clearance which is great and then the exhaust side I got a 0.011 here and just like the intake side it slides just barely in I've tried a 0.012 and it was kind of tough already so we're gonna stick it to that I'm gonna run it through all the other cylinders to make sure the clearance is good now if the clearance for some reason isn't good, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to pull the head off and uh, service the valves. They do sell shims with different thicknesses and that is why it's important to check that so then you know whether you have to get a shim that's thicker or thinner to meet your specifications. Once again, I'm putting cams in this thing. It's very important. I have it up to specifications. Otherwise, I could potentially damage the customer's cam after he starts running the engine because the clearance wasn't clear how it should be from factory. So that's something to keep in mind. Definitely do that test if you have the valve covers off, if you're doing any type of valve work, it doesn't hurt. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes maximum. So the leak down test came out good. All the valve flash came out good on the intake and exhaust side. Now I feel confident to start tearing this engine apart. I'm gonna remove the timing case cover. I'm gonna remove the timing belt and I'm gonna pull the cams and replace the water pump, replace the oil pump, replace the tensioner. And then once I have the cams off, I'm gonna remove the valve guide seals and replace those as well. All right, you guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. On the next episode, we're gonna start simplifying the cooling system, getting rid of the unnecessary coolers and plugging up all the unnecessary lines. Hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.